Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Andrew and Price here, once again, also known as Alfred Seago. And uh, I've been doing messing around with 1.3 some more. And I kind of ran into an interesting bug this morning. So I thought I'd go ahead and try to record this. I actually do have my resolution set properly this and I, in fact, also have my mic adjusted properly this time, so hooray for that. But you can see, uh, I'm presently working on a random number generator that uses uh, animals to generate the uh, numbers. And I was having some issues with the pistons up here, which were, for some reason, one of them was not picking up blocks. It wasn't because it was a short pulse. Then the one next to it picked them up fine, whatever. It was just weird. So I logged out of the game, came back, and I came back to this. Now, since you haven't been working on this thing all morning, you may think, oh, well, this is just a half-complete building. But it's not, because if I try to move forward, look, there's a wall. I don't see a wall, but uh, the game is telling me there's a wall because there is actually a wall there. And if I get in here, you can see the same thing. It's There's an invisible wall. It's not a chunk error because, well, you know, it's allowing me to see things at the bottom of the chunk. But for some reason, this wall here is missing, which is very, very odd. So let me try to re-log this thing again, and even the rain is falling through. This is so weird. Because you would think if there was a wall there that I could collide with, because there is a ceiling as well, that, uh, oh crap. <laughs> now I'm stuck. Alright, I'm going to have to uh, pause the recording for a second, and uh, probably quit the game and restart to see if that fixes it. Be back in one moment. Alright, and I am back. It's actually a good bit later, because I had to go run to the doctor's office but I guess since I was doing this video to show off that error I was also going to real quickly show off uh, this this was something that a uh, guy on reddit that I replied to uh, was working on and I thought you know what I will have a go at this too and see if I can come up with anything and basically it's a random number generator and he wanted to use it for doing either I'm not sure if it was for dice rolls or for doing something that uh, made it look like a dice as a decorative uh, or a die as a decorative item um, but regardless I decided to come up with a way of doing it but the problem with most random generators in Minecraft or random number generators in Minecraft is that they are very laggy and on a multiplayer server that's not very good so, what I did for a solution is to use uh, chickens, because they move somewhat randomly anyways. And, uh, you know, the idea was initially, and I'll show you over here where I started, I had initially had two of these chambers, just like this one, with a uh, pressure pad in the center and, you know, like four chickens in here. And the idea was they would move back and forth. I tried to... Uh, I thought I had read before that they were attracted to light, so I was trying different things with that to see if I could get them to move to, from side to side when they would activate the pressure plate, but uh, couldn't really get something I liked too much. So I kept messing around with it, kept messing around with it, and this is what I eventually came up with. Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, it's like at some of the extremes, it's still having issues, although right now it's hitting uh, a six, I do believe. Uh, but basically, it's uh, my first use of uh, tripwires, actually, which for the most part I like. And uh, the uh, swimming chickens will, you know, flutter and jump. And when they jump, they hit the tripwire, and that sets off uh, that particular the particular number that is uh, linked. I, I'm using basically what is I think statics. I think that's the person who I based uh, this off of. Uh, it's a train terminal selector essentially and so it comes up and then it goes through here and because I was initially using pressure plates I put this in so that uh, it would generate a pulse instead of uh, the chicken sitting on the pressure plate 
but I eventually decided oh, I'll give tripwires a you know a try, see how they work in this scenario, and so far they've been pretty good. I'm pretty happy with them. Uh, one thing I would say I don't like about them very much is this. As you can see, uh, things can climb into the little like if you try to hide the tripwires. Things like chickens can climb in there. I wish that it would uh, keep them from doing that, but I guess that's really the only one block high creature, so other than, I guess, um, slime. So maybe it's not that big of an issue. Uh, initially, I, I've you know tried to think out different ways to do this. Uh, different, uh, Like I said, I had issues with the uh, chickens just wanting to sit on the stupid uh, pressure plate, so I was like, well, maybe I can knock them off with a piston or something like that. Couldn't come up with anything really good there, so that's why I went to the tripwires and then the water. I also uh, thought about just putting a, uh, having, like, building one of my normal counters, uh, building a clock, and basically having a chicken here, and then have them wander to the end of the ramp, and when they fall off, they uh, hit a pressure plate. Uh, and they may circle them back around with water or something, but it still seemed like it would be too easy to predict. Uh, plus, I also didn't like that the uh, the individual, if it is going to be used actually as a die roll, um, the, the, it's very detached because you release the chicken and you just wait uh, for them to select your number or something. So with this, the whole idea is you either stand on a pressure plate or you throw a switch and then you wait, and then when you're ready, you hit the button, but you see there's a delay. And so, whatever, you can't select the number, um, you know, there's a little bit of luck involved still, but you have more involvement. So, I like that. Um, the random numbers, for the most part, are pretty much random. Uh, like I said, some of the extremes don't seem to get hit enough. Uh, and they tend to pile towards the middle more, uh, which I guess is okay, but you do get a good mix of numbers, so, you know, I don't know. Uh, I also wish this thing would update more often than it does, but due to the fact that, uh, like I showed earlier, I've been having some issues with, uh, Minecraft recently, and then also there is no protection in this thing to, to protect against multiple inputs uh, the way it's designed right now um, it's probably for the best that they're not coming faster than they are because I'm afraid it would jam uh, I do occasionally get sevens which are not an option but they do show up and then I also get zeros so you know uh, those technically should not be options but they sometimes show up uh, as you can see right now, the chickens are kind of stuck between three, uh, three and four, so they're hitting those a lot. Um, I may redesign some of this, trying to, because originally it was designed around the pressure plates, so I may do another design run on this. I haven't decided if I really want to go too much further with this, so this was more of a proof of concept more than anything else. Just wanted to show that it could be done, and that you could get you know, somewhat decent results, and it doesn't create too much lag. Because, uh, I mean, I could do a very, you know, I, I've never done one before, but I could do a pretty advanced uh, random number generator, but it would be a nightmare on the redstone. And if you try to use that in a multiplayer environment, it would probably just freak out because it just doesn't handle... Um, I, I would think there would be very... Very little in the way of tolerances on that kind of a device, because it's all based on timing. Uh, so you're probably... Yeah, see there, you got a zero. Which I'm like, that shouldn't be an option. But I think it's uh, too many inputs are coming through. And then it's uh, ending up uh, resetting the whole thing. Uh, because two come through at about the same time. And it's the same thing with, um, with the, when I, you get a seven on the thing. But, you know, you can see that the numbers do kind of flip back and forth. We have a 2, a 1. So they do rotate around, so you don't always get the same thing. They do come in bunches, they seem, because the water ends up pushing the chickens into a uh, little flock. But because they end up kind of separating into two groups, you end up with 
uh, them on either side so they can end up hitting uh, different values. So it's not as predictable as it would seem. Um, and because there is a delay here, like it's an instant on, I ran two sets of wires. Uh, this one is pretty much instant across here, and then it triggers this. And then once uh, these get all the way down here, it uh, wraps around and keeps this active until uh, the power from that gets drained. If I were to redo it, I might also add in something that uh, gives a uh, m makes it so the user has a minimum input time. Uh, so they can't just like re-roll the sub same number if they wanted to. Um, also, these up here are supposed, to, uh, because there is a delay, and it, it is supposed to allow the user to choose different links that they want to roll for, uh, the lights around the corners are supposed to indicate uh, that the it is currently rolling uh, still until they go off. And then you can see that the user rolled a 4. In that circumstance so like I said not perfect but you know not bad either uh, it's been kind of interesting playing around with the trip wires for the most part I like them uh, like I said I don't like about uh, the fact that they seem to be uh, completely empty uh, basically they don't take up any space so uh, mobs can get in there and another issue I have with them is I really the I wish they would make the default texture for the tripwire itself a little bit more visible. I understand that that kind of goes against the whole idea of it's a tripwire, you can't see it, but it is a pain sometimes to place it, especially uh, when I was down there trying to make just some quick fixes and was getting pushed around by the water. It was just, uh, I ended up putting it between these different points and stuff like that. Uh, this device in general is not a very pretty device, uh, as you can well see. Uh, this is just, uh, like I said, it originally started as a, uh, it was intended for use with pressure plates, and then since then I've had to, uh, make a lot of different alterations, trying to see if I can get it so that I'm getting, you know, a good spread of numbers, they're not too consistent, and, uh, also trying to make it so that, you know, the, uh, device doesn't jam and stuff like that. So... That's really all I had to show today. Um, you know, I hope that Mahjong uh, gets some of the issues sorted out with uh, Minecraft. Because, yeah, it is kind of annoying with some of this stuff where... I know Etho was having... Yeah, you see a 7 right there. Um, I know Etho was having some issues uh, where blocks were appealing, appearing to be hollow. And I'm wondering if it has something to do with how they're doing... Um, I know they've really tried to decrease the memory usage, and as we can see here, you know, I'm only using 10% of my available memory, so, I mean, it's, uh, you know, they've made some advances there, but I kind of wonder if maybe that's some of the rendering issues we're having right now, uh, you know, that, uh, it's, they're doing something with the blocks or how they're rendering it, I'm not sure. Uh, really, but it does seem like they've made some changes to the rendering engine that are uh, causing issues as I hit a lag spike. But uh, yeah, that's all I had to show. So I guess hopefully this was interesting. Uh, sorry I don't have things really to a uh, point where I really want to show them, but you know, it's still in a state of development. And I guess hopefully you found it interesting and perhaps enjoyed seeing some of my work and hearing me grimace and when I see weird things like that. So the, once again, this is Andrew and Price, also known as Altered's Ego, saying good day and good gaming. Bye.